Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be going through DeepGram, which is a real time transcription service, some other audio features, WebSockets, and LangChain. We're going to put all this together and look at some experiments that DeepGram's put together and then actually trace it through LangSmith. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when I was experimenting with uh, different kind of conversational bots and specifically looking at like voice for transcription and different types of audio, I came across this tool called DeepGram. And one of the things that I really liked about it was how fast it was. So it has this real-time accuracy for uh, transcriptions. The other cool thing is that it has Node.js as well as Python, which is pretty standard, but this lot idea of live streaming the transcription was what really interested me. And so they do have things like uh, speech to text and text to speech, as well as audio intelligence, which I haven't played with, but seems really interesting. And so when I was researching, they actually have a Next.js example. And so if we look at this example, we can just, we have a microphone where we can do a test. And we even have this deep gram is connecting and it's telling, telling us the connection status. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Hello from Nerding.io. And so you could see that the transcription was happening in real time right here. And then again, we have this connection open. So if we look at the code itself in the uh, Next.js starter kit, we can actually see how this is happening. So the way it's doing this is it's toggling the microphone on and on. First, we need to have our uh, media device. Then we're actually defining our recorder. So our microphone, this is all just straight JavaScript right here. But later on, we're actually uh, establishing a connection not only to the API, but also a, creating a client to listen for DeepGram to actually do the transcription live. So in their costs, they actually have this built in where you're, you're doing so many minutes. So the then you also have the uh, the connection on and then you're looking for the type of event of open as well as close and so that's what is what's allowed to process the tr transcription live which i thought was really interesting the other cool thing is they have like a bunch of different uh projects that are kind of experimental and so that's what we're going to look at in detail is this idea of this experimental project called real-time voice. So with real-time voice, you can actually see right here, it's actually using this Athena V4. This was the, uh, the, the voice, the speech to text that they just released um, back in December, I believe. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this project and actually use the API keys that they have, but then, we're actually going to run this through LangChain and then take a look at it in LangSmith. So all you need to do is pull down this project and then I'll show you a few modifications that we're going to make. Real quick, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. And with that, let's just go ahead and get back to the content. So once we've pulled this down, the first thing that we want to do is actually look at some environment variables. So I went ahead and just made a sample because we're going to add some things outside of the uh, description. And so you need to have the open API key, the telegram, and then these variables for lane chain. So you have your endpoint, your project, and your API key. As you can see, I already started running this in the NPM. So you can see that it's transcribing and picking up the information down here in my terminal. It's console logging everything out. And so what we're gonna do is we'll go through the HTML, but I just wanna show you really quick how this looks. So right here we have this information, it's not actually transcribing, but it's picking up everything I'm saying in the microphone as I'm running through and in my, my command line. So, and that's because the server is actually console, log, console logging, not the actual browser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what is, how this is built. So right here, you can see this theme and you can see your uh, text-to-speech voice and where this right here is gonna be a visual. So if we do something like, can you help me with- I'm sorry. 
building a YouTube video. So you can That's great. What kind of video are you planning to make? You can see that there's the audio wave here. You can see the text is coming in and it's pretty quickly jumping in. Uh, so again, remember this is experimental, but it's able to actually understand what I'm saying and then being able to respond. And hopefully you could hear her speaking. Again, we're on the default theme, but there's other themes, these different types of models. So let's go ahead and go back to the code and just kind of look at what is actually going on here. So the first thing is, is we're actually using WebSockets. So we're pulling in socket into our, uh, into our code so that we can actually communicate and keep an open connection between the front end and the back end. We're using this wave server as an audio visualizer. Um, and then we have this model change, which is just allowing us to look at different models. And what's cool about these models is if you look, since we're using LangChain, we're going to use LangChain, we essentially just have prompts. It's telling it to act a certain way and provide feedback and then go out to OpenAI to pull information back. So it's almost like a conversational bot, but in the sense that it's using audio. And you could see that very quickly it was responding. There wasn't as much latency as you would typically see, which I found really interesting. The next piece is just the, the style of the voices. So these are, are just kind of like default voices that, that you have. And then you have the ability to record, which is just toggling, uh, which we saw. So you have um, the container for an audio file and then our script. So if we continue into uh, what we want to establish the connection between the WebSockets, what we need to do is we just have our WebSocket or origin as well as our API origin. We're setting up a audio file. This is where we're actually going to return some of the text. And then we have our audio element, and, which was how we'll actually play the information. We have our audio for text uh, function right here. If you see right here, this is where it's taking the the data and making it a blob and then setting that information to an mp3 right here in the browser. So we're actually creating an audio element. This is the function we'll call for the audio for text. This is where we're actually setting up our recorder, similar like we did in the next uh, JS version. We're actually just setting up our events to make sure that not only are we getting the recorder, but we're actually setting up the socket here as well at the same time that we're going to set up that recorder. And then we're waiting for the socket. We're going to send our add text both in our interim result, which is what's happening here. You can see down in the uh, console of the, the server and then our speech final. So when it's actually listening and processing. And then lastly, we're establishing a socket ID. This socket ID is really important because it allows us to understand which socket are we communicating back and forth from. So we just have an established connection to this single page and not broadcasting it out to every single socket that's available. The next piece is the, the chat and actually showing the, the text. So this is separating the, the lines and basically defining on who is speaking based on the AI or if uh, it's us speaking. And that's where we're seeing the color differentiate. And then of course we need to send our information to uh, the prompt. And so we have our prompt AI here. And then we're saying that this is our socket or our API connection to our chat. It has our socket ID, it has our model, it has our voice, and then it has the message that it actually used to encode right here. All this information is gonna get sent to the backend and that's where we're gonna process our link change events. These are just to show what's start and stop being and then our, uh, if we have any model changes. All right, so next let's actually see this information going to the chat backend. Remember, we're taking our socket ID, we're taking our model, our voice, and then our encoded message. 
So if we look at the server, what we're doing here is we're setting up all of DeepRAM. So we have our TTS API, we're defining our port, and it's diving right into the, the prompt AI. So it's passing the socket, the model, and the message. What's interesting about this is it's, again, grabbing from the, the models here. So we know which model, which is going to act as our prompt, as the, uh, the, the chat message. And then it's actually putting in our message here. But this is defined by the open socket, as well as this call is actually going into Langchain. So let's go ahead and find this function. So we're calling it inside of our Git chat. So we saw that this was coming across on this URI. We're taking this information from the request. We're sending it to our prompt. And then we're expecting a response back that we're just sending. As we're speaking, we're doing something similar. We're doing text to speech. We're actually as it's speaking, it's actually doing text-to-speech. So once we get this call from the uh, the prompt AI, we're actually going to return it to this, this URL and actually have a buffer as an array so that it's speaking in almost real time. So we're sending as a buffer. This is important for the, the streaming aspect of this. And so what's really crazy is that we have all of our events here and that we're seeing a two-way connection between them. And this is all done by the socket. That's why the socket ID is so important. It's maintaining this connection between the two so that there's an open back and forth. And right here is where we're defining what instance of that so that we can maintain this chat. So when we have our OpenAI chat, this part is the link chain, then we're able to call this instance of that link chain chat and then actually do the call function, which is happening again on link chain. So what's what was really interesting to me is that you're using the socket ID to essentially maintain the different types of chats that you're having. And that's how you can consolidate your chat history into one kind of uh, link chain, chain event, uh, or sequence, I should say. And so what we're going to do now is we'll do a little bit more testing, and then we'll actually look at how this uh, goes into link chain. So if we go back to our browser, and we have a new instance of this DeepGram, let's just try the therapist, and we'll say that we want to uh, know more, or we have a problem with public speaking. I have a problem with public speaking. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with Thank you for sharing that with Of course, if you would like to skip any questions or steps, please let me know. Is there anything specific you would like to skip or any particular topic you would like to discuss? So, I'd like to discuss public speaking. Hello there. It seems like you're feeling a bit down. Of course, I'm here to help. Let's talk about public speaking. Can you tell me more about what specifically troubles you about it? I have stage fright. Thank you for sharing that with me. Can you tell me more about the situations or conditions in which you experience stage fright? So as we're going through, you can see it's, again, this is experimental, but if it's picking up the fact that as we started start talking, it started pulling this in immediately, then it, it kind of cut off for a second. It was already trying to say stuff and then I spoke over it. So you need to figure out a better way to chain the events. Um, but I, when we when we talk here about I'd like to discuss public speaking, it actually comes back with a question. We can interact with it. It was fairly quick. And then it's asking for, again, for more information. So in order to view this in the lane chain part, again, we're using lane chain for the call function, right? We have We know that our model is getting set up here in this particular way and with the chat open AI, because this model variable is associated with the socket ID that we're communicating with. And so we can actually trace this 
through the runnable sequence in Langsmith. So if we go in here, for me, it's just looking at the um, the default. You want to check and make sure you have your, your project and whatnot. We can actually see all the system inputs that are actually coming and how quick this is. Not to mention how many tokens are being associated with it, what your run count is, and um, and everything else. So if we look at our latency, this latency is pretty good. I mean, it's it's staying staying very green. Again, you can see that the system, this chat or this prompt, is really just the model that we looked at that's being associated in the server. So. If we look at the sequence, we can actually uh, check and see that it's being chained together. So it's not uh, a ton of information, but it's still a way for us to look at the conversation that's being had, as well as the uh, the latency itself. So looking to see what what our run count is, how many tokens we've used. Um, and the if there's any errors or uh, streaming or latency. I just found this really interesting that you could actually use Langsmith because of the fact that you're using the Langchain functions and then start tracking the, uh, the latency of how quick this uh, real-time bot is. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. What we went over was DeepGram and the ability to connect real-time transcription Look at their example of a real uh, voice interaction bot, almost like a conversational bot. We checked out how we can use WebSockets in this process. And then we actually traced all that information in Langsmith. So if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. And with that, happy nerding.